Don't be sad, Mitza. We can't take you along with us. The trip is too hard. Mitza is afraid to be here alone. Right, Mitza? I'm not afraid. And I won't be alone. I have a friend. Right, White Fang? Let's go. Indians are going to save our skins. Much Indian for that canoe. Uh. Maybe you didn't hear right, Indian. If I was intending to buy your canoe, what are you asking for it? Sorry, but we have to use it. Transport furs. We'll buy all the damn furs, too. That suits you. They are already promised. What do you mean, Indian? Don't talk nonsense. That's enough, Ted. If they don't want to sell it, let them keep it.
Sister. <laughs> Take it easy now. There's a good fire. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you, fella. You just take it easy now. Easy. I ain't gonna hurt you. So don't you worry. For who you guarding there, huh? Master. We don't want him to get bit up by the wolves, now, do we? I ain't afraid. I know you're just doing your job. Well, now I gotta help you, understand? You stay in the cold, you're free. That wouldn't be any good. You know I'm your friend, don't you? Sure you do. Cause you're, you're a clever dog. That's a good fella. Great spirit, watch out for your son. This way, at least, you're safe from the wolves, boy. to become a doctor before you began to travel and write. What happened to your love of medicine? Let's say that my love for people was strong. <laughs> Please excuse me, Mr. Scott. Now that I see you, I would like to do a photo story on you. I'm quite sure that our readers picture you as I did, a husky bearded bear of a man, like the prospectors you write of in your books. Well... If I were you, I wouldn't disillusion them completely. Off the record, madam, I chew tobacco, and I'm very rough with women. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. Yes? I find your book upsetting. I think it quite mad. 
Jason Scott. Yes? I want to speak to you alone. Excuse me. Come over here. Sit down there. Waiter. Anything you say, mademoiselle. I think you're a big liar, Jason Scott. White Fang doesn't exist. What makes you so sure of that? Well, now, if you had a dog like that one, you would have taken him with you. No one leaves a dog like White Fang behind. Hmm. You know something? You're right. I'll tell you what happened. It was actually White Fang who left me when he found out I was coming here. And just between us, this is no place for White Fang. Mm, yeah, that's for darn sure. Okay, you're not a liar. Thank you. Look here, Scott, I have to speak to you. Guess there's nothing we can do. Unfortunately. Scott, you seem to forget. I spent a lot of money to launch your book, and what do you do? You waste your time with people who don't count. Who don't count, huh? You're pretty foxy, you know. Your literary soirees give me a tremendous nostalgia for the Klondike. Those people out there may be crazy, but by God, they're real. So you're going back to write some more stories, then? You bet I am. And when I do, I'm going to give them to another publisher. Mm, excuse me, please. Yes? May I have your autograph, Mr. Scott? Of course. What's the matter? Don't you like Grey Wolf for a name? What do you want to be called? Firebrand. Hey, that's not a bad name, Firebrand. Hey, wait here, Firebrand. See this boy? Go get it, Firebrand. Firebrand's no good either, huh? Didn't like Grey Wolf. Well, what is your name? You sure you don't like Firebrand? I'm gonna call you stupid. Stupid dumb dog. How do you like stupid for a name, huh? Hey. Don't go thinking I'm afraid because of your white fangs. What? You mean your name's White Fang? White Fang? Grandpa! 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 I found out the dog's name! Yeah. Who, who told you? He did. It's White Fang. Oh, White Fang. See for yourself. White Fang! Here, White Fang! Hey. <laughs> Well, he ain't exactly jumping for joy. You'll see, Grandpa. We're gonna be friends. White Fang, here! <laughs> so hey, it's look. White Fang, is it? Is this ten dollars yours, Grandpa? Hmm? Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> Listen. Don't you tell anybody, you understand? You know how people's minds work. <clears throat> You see, son, they think they can buy dogs in a sled for just $10 and, and then just head north. So don't you breathe a word, understand? Come on, White Fang. Let's have some fun. Come on. Come on. Underwear. The other guy is too smart. I'll play with Tom Butcher. 
Tom has broken no time. As crazy as always, old tar water. Can't blame his kids for not giving him any money. If he had a dog in a sleigh, he'd go looking for gold up north, as old as he is. Every ten years, he goes haywire. Gets gold crazy. And it's just ten years since the last time he came back from the Klondike. Let's say one hundred dollars. Door. On the word of John Tarwater. I don't bet on no word. Oh, now hold on there, stranger. Everybody knows me in these parts. I got nine sons, twenty-three grandchildren. God knows how many nieces and nephews. If I lose, they'll stand good for me. All right, then. Would you mind signing what you just said? They mightn't be so willing to take care of your debts for you, understand? Please. I raised to three hundred. Don't play anymore, Grandpa. If you lose, they'll lock you up because you can't pay. I'll see. You. Can you beat four sevens?
sons have grown old. Ha! Come on! The only one who takes after me is my little grandson, young Bill. He's going to make a real tar water one of these days. <laughs> Mark my words. Yeah! You're disappointed that we left him behind. I know. <laughs> I know. of getting used to pain. Oh, sure. <coughs> often, uh, now uh, often. Uh, uh, ah! Uh, ah! Ah! You see, you know, I get it. Instead of standing here, laughing like idiots, why don't you help me to build a decent hospital? Take more than willing hands to turn this hut into a hospital, Sister Evangeline. Why? Well, that's right, Sam. I've already told you, sister. There's only one person who can give us all the material we need, and that's Mr. Forth. Well, good. Sister, Mr. Forth's got everything you need, but he won't lift a finger to help you or take a bet on it. Why would he refuse me? We got 300 pounds. You can go. Next one. Ah. Thank you, Harvey. Say a prayer for me. I would like to speak with Mr. Forth, please. Follow me. What's the matter, sister? You look as if you've just seen a ghost. No, not a ghost, but a devil. Maybe we can pull it out backwards. Go, darn tree. Hey, quit your yapping. I'll cut you loose. Oh, pull ho! Grandpa! Darling! Grandpa! Stop it! Stop! Stop! I'm back! No, I'm back! Come back! Stop! Stop! Come on!
better than no drugs at all. Good boy. Please, why don't you sit down? We have already met Mr. Forth, I believe. Yes, many years ago in Dawson City. But his name wasn't Forth then. It was Beauty Smith. And everybody remembers him for what he did there. Beauty Smith? It would be interesting to meet the man who bears such a striking resemblance to me. I am not mistaken. I think the good Lord could not have made another face like yours. And if I tell you I've never been in Dorson? Then you lie. It's your word against mine, sister. No. It's not my word alone. I guess you weren't expecting us, were you, Beauty? Too bad you were paralyzed. Because if you weren't, I'd smash every bone in your body. Gentlemen, that's enough. I represent the law here. I think you'd better tell me who you are. An inspector of mine, sir. And he is Jason Scott, the writer. The writer? What are your charges against Mr. Forth? Three years ago, it's easy to prove my innocence. Kill an old man, to hold a child, a hostage, to blow up a dam. It seems it would require more than the brutality and cynicism Mr. Scott so blithely attributes to me. I think it would require the use of one's legs. There was nothing wrong with your legs in Dawson. That's where you're wrong, I'm afraid. Lieutenant Leclerc, how long have we known each other? We met five years ago in Alberta. He was already in a wheelchair at the time. Are you quite sure you're not mistaken? Hmm? My memory, sir, is excellent. Liar. You are a disgusting pair of liars. Sister. You know I could have you arrested. Go to the devil. Please, sister. Calm down. <sighs> Under the circumstances, there's nothing left for me to do but to offer my profound apologies to Mr. Forth who we hoped was Beauty Smith. I accept your apology. Since no charges have been made, I'll be happy to forget the whole thing. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye, gentlemen. Thank you, Lieutenant. I didn't believe a word I said. Not that inspector, nor that writer Scott. As of today, Beauty will have to respect the law like everyone else. The whole thing's getting too dangerous. If the game's worth anything, you're bound to run some risks. Not me. I... I told you right from the start. I'm an officer. I refuse to get involved. A scandal. Risk dishonor. I married an imbecile. I was better off when I worked in duty saloon. Jane. 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 Jane is sick and tired of this stupid life. I want to live somewhere warm for a change. In a city. I want beautiful clothes. I want a beautiful house. I want money. And if you can't give them to me, it's finished between us, Charles. Okay. 
can't live without you. You know that. Beauty is the only one who can make us rich. Don't you understand? I'll do what you want. We heard some barking and we went to have a look. Well, we found this dog pulling the sleigh like crazy. All by himself. I ain't kidding either. Take a look at the load he was pulling. In there. You'll never believe what was on that sleigh. A pile of junk like you've never seen before. And there was an old man out of his mind. Cold. And a little kid. And it's a miracle they were alive. There's a man who has two good reasons for giving thanks to God. I'd like to know at least one of those reasons. You can know both. He has a beautiful young daughter and 300 pounds of supplies. You made two mistakes. First of all, she's not my daughter, she's my sister. And secondly, I don't have all those supplies. But you're pulling out, aren't you? Yeah. We're pulling out. But not for the high plains. We're heading back. I'm fed up with what's going on around here. I wish to hell I'd never set foot in this godforsaken spot in the first place. Well, I'm sorry about that. I'm really sorry about that. Sister or daughter, it doesn't really change anything, does it? No. But the fact that you're going away, too, changes everything. Why don't you tell me exactly what's going on here? I guess you're the only one who doesn't know, huh? Liverpool. Yeah? I'm going to return Jonathan's frying pan. All right, so what is going on here? When you buy supplies from Ford, mm -hmm. you got to sign a contract with him. And if you find any gold, half of it belongs to him. He stays here nice and safe. And the one who takes all the risk practically works for him. And that's not all. He charges the earth for 300 pounds of supplies, and he only gives you 200 pounds. But according to the law, 200 won't get you an exit pass. <laughs> the law here is completely under Forth's thumb. Once you sign a contract with Forth, the carrier will give you your pass. Since you've uh, decided to leave anyway, Got nothing to lose. I'll make you a deal. You sign the contract, and I'll buy you your 300 pounds of supplies. But Forth will only give me 200. Exactly. And Leclerc will sign your pass, and his signature will be the proof of his collaboration. Can you get back without their catching on? I think so. Good. We'll go to Norman together. There's a judge there. We'll press charges against Leclerc for his complicity with Forth. Hey, White Fang! Fang! I guess he belongs to the one he loves. And you're saying he loves you as well. And you're saying you're his master. Well, that's quite a problem. Do you have a solution? What'd happen if we let White Fang choose? Okay, mister. Fair enough. How do we do it? Let's see who he follows. You walk away in that direction, and I'll go in the other. Okay? Okay. My name is Jason Scott. Goodbye. And I'm Bill Tarwater. Pleased to meet you. Let's go.
It works, I know. Leave it alone. So, what's the verdict? Verdict? Well, you saw what he did. To me, that means he loves both of us. Be all right if I share him with you? Oh! oh. See your permit. Mm. I'll give you a word of advice. When you stop for the night, tie one of your dogs a little distance from the fire. When it gets too cold, he'll bark and wake you up, and it'll remind you to put wood on the fire. For a cold's a killer. You remember, mister, keep up a good fire. If you don't, You've had it. You can go. Mm. Good luck. Thanks. Ah! I don't have any excuses. I meant to deceive you, and that's all there is to it. I did a rotten thing, and I realized just how rotten it was when I saw those two men out there in the snow. I wanted to go looking for gold, but they made me think about all those men who died because they were shortchanged by force. It's easy enough to head out, but it's next to impossible to survive without sufficient rations. Poor Jimmy. Jimmy was already dead. Uh, I left him out there in the snow and ice. And Carter. Well, he doesn't stand much of a chance either, I guess. Mr. Scuff. Hey, Harvey. What is it? You've got to come to the mission, Mr. Scuff. Sister Evangeline needs you. I'll be right with you. Uh, 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 uh. 
Take it easy, Carver. You're going to be all right. Sister of Angeline, she'll take care of you. Don't you worry, none. You'll see. You're going to be all right. I can't. I'm not a surgeon. I know, but we have nobody else. Can't you see he'll die if we don't operate? Don't you worry, Nyla. You're in good hands. Here. Here, Connor. Take a sip of this. I... I know a little. I can help you. Please. What you're asking is impossible. It would be useless to try. But the gangrene will kill him. We must do something. Otherwise, it would be criminal. Oh. I can't stand the pain. These legs are like two rotten branches. They gotta be cut off or he's a goner for sure. I'd do it myself, but my hands ain't so steady anymore. Kurt, take Bill away. Give him some whiskey. Yeah. Here, Carter, you're going to get yourself some free whiskey. Yeah. It's going to make you feel better. More. More. Oh, boy. You feel better already, don't you?
I don't know who it was, I'll tell you. It was a goddamn wolf that Tarwater Brat drags around. That's who it was. What? White Fang did it? Yeah. I saw it. Believe me, you dog's a killer. Oh, what are you waiting for? The kid keeps him at the mission. Let us kill the roof. They're gonna kill you. No. Run for your life. Run for your life. Go on. They'll kill you if you don't. They'll kill you if you don't. Go on. Run. Go on. Secret, Carter. I ain't figuring on dying till I find my gold mine. Because I am getting kind of old, the day I find that mine is getting closer all the time. Trust me, Carter. We'll divide the gold. Half and half. Just like you were going to do with your pal, Jimmy. <laughs>
You better go around telling anyone that White Fang's back. We'll keep him hidden here. Come on. Just for the time being. <coughs> Safer. Carter had a map of the mine. He's sure to have given it to Tarwater. You can bet on it. That's why the old man's taken off. Tell me, my friends, if you had a map of a gold mine, what's the first thing you'd do? Hmm? Well, I would hide it. So nobody would steal it from me, for sure. A smart man would memorize it first. For once in there, it would be harder for anyone to take it away from him. If Carter is less of an idiot than you are, that's what he'd have done. That is, if the mind is not just a figment of his imagination. Good work, Harvey. You won't be sorry you're on my side.
Beauty no longer has any need of Mr. Forth. Yeah, but I... But you were... It was a useful alibi, in case anyone recognized me. Huh. And now, gentlemen, the time's come to act. Uh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I said to the sister. I don't know what to do. She must be. She'll be here soon. Yes, here she is now. all day. Where's my grandpa? Please, get me something to drink. Whiskey. I feel terrible. But I can't. You're not Please. supposed to. Just a job. to ask a favor of you. Where's the mine? Tower word is heading for. Ah! Hey, Beauty, look! Leave him alone! Stay where you are, kid. Ah! Sister, say you thought you might need your help. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. 
taking care of that goddamn dog. Lieutenant, what you saw last night. Two men came to the mission. They tortured Carter. They wanted information from him. Then they started the fire. I heard the name of one of the men. It was Beauty. Do you still think there are two men called Beauty, Lieutenant Leclerc? Or do you admit that Beauty and Forth are one and the same person? and that Forth was no more paralyzed six years ago in Alberta than he is today. Mr. Scott. Murderer! 
Mr. Scott, with your permission, I would like a few minutes alone. Tu non avresti permesso. Non avrei dovuto permettere niente fin dal principio. A te non bastava il tenente Leclerc. Dovevo lasciarti partire. No. Oh no, Charles. I love you. I swear it. Everything I wanted for myself, I wanted for you too. Sergeant, it's up to you to arrest Beauty now. Or fourth, if you prefer. You won't catch him. He left last night. Where did he go? North. To the high plains where Carter's mine is. They're going to kill the old man, too.
He put White Fang. Sergeant. I'll try to flush them out. Cover me. Don't risk it, Scott. They can't hold out. Sooner or later, they'll have to surrender. He couldn't trick White Fang, but he, he sure tricked us. Come on. Hurry up!
daughter and, and the other half bit was for a little uh, bill. I, 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 I found it. Or, uh, yes. I, I feel uh, very happy. I never felt so. It's his mine. Now it belongs to Bill. You're wrong there, Mr. Scott. Darwater died before he registered the claim. According to the law, the mine isn't his. The law says a mine belongs to the man who registers it with the land commission. It's uh, not enough to find it. I propose a dog sled race from here to the commission office. The winner gets the mine.
that car in. We need to change the dogs. Come on, come on. Move, move, move. Move. Hey, how come we're not waiting down there with the others? To change the dogs. <laughs> because Scott's smarter than they are. You see, they're all coming in together. Look. Changing dogs all in the same place is going to waste a lot of time. Oh, Scott really was clever. You see? Ha! 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 Harvey. Hey! Is that smart or the skirt? Oh, I wouldn't say that, but it's just as smart. But he doesn't have white fangs. And he doesn't know that we have him. Nobody knows that you're back. Yeah, I'm afraid Harvey has got too much of a lead, even for White Fang.
Scott. Mining commission is waiting for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. My congratulations. Please. Sign here, please, the mining lease, and the mine will be yours. But isn't your name Jason Scott? That's right. But only when I write my books. So long, Kurt. Good luck, Jason. Look after him. You be a good dog, Mike. Come on, Bill. Take care Let's of go. Bill now. All right. Goodbye, Bill. Are you sure the White Fang doesn't want to go with you? I'm sure, Bill. A dog like White Fang can't just live anywhere. He's fine right here. Other places, other people would be bad for him. But how does he know that? <sighs> Believe me, dogs know a lot more than you think they do. Now on, he's all yours. A dog should only have one master. Take good care of him. Yourself, too. Thank <laughs> you. 